in 6th century BC. An ancient Greek philosopher named Pythagoras was looking for an answer to the following question. Why do some combinations of musical sounds seem to be more impressive than the other ones? And what he found out was numerical ratios that represent a harmonic overtone series on different strings. He observed that when the lengths of vibrating strings are expressible as ratios of integers, the tones will be harmonious, and the smaller the integers, the more balanced the sound. And that's when the term acoustic was introduced to us. Well, acoustical engineering, or more like acoustic engineering, is the section of engineering that deals with sound and vibration. And speaking of dealing with sound and vibration, we're talking about every single parameter responsible for creating vibration and later, sound. Anyways, acoustic is, in general, mechanical waves in gases, liquids, and solids, which includes topics like vibration, sound, infrasound, and ultrasound. A scientist whose job is in the field of acoustics is called an acoustician. In contrast, someone working in the field of technology that is related to acoustics may be designated as an acoustical engineer. In almost all aspects of modern society, the application of acoustics is present with the most obvious, the audio and noise control industries. And that's referred to as noise control, or the thing that you get to hear nowadays, noise cancellation. Unwanted noise can have significant impacts on animals as well as human health and well-being, hugely reduce attainment by students in schools, and of course, hearing loss. Well, hearing is one of the most crucial means of surviving in the animal world, and speech is one of the most idiosyncratic characteristics of human development and their culture. Consequently, the science of acoustics spread across many facets of human society, like music, architecture, medicine, warfare, industrial production, and more. By the same token, animal species like songbirds and frogs use both sound and hearing as key elements before mating or just marking their possessions. Art, science, and technology have provoked one another to advance the whole, as in many other fields of knowledge. These all are fine until you get some noise from them. And if you would like to cancel the noise, you have to follow some rules. Well, noise cancellation principles are implemented into technology and design in a variety of ways, including control by redesigning the sound sources, the design of noise barriers, sound absorbers, suppressors, and buffer zones, and most definitely, the use of hearing protection. It's not quite impeccable in terms of sound, for example, a Bluetooth speaker, but it definitely works on today's earbuds and over-ear headphones. But acoustic engineering is not only about noise control, it's a lot more than that. It covers positive uses of sound from the use of ultrasound in medicine to the programming of digital sound synthesizers, and from designing a concert hall in order to enhance the sound of the orchestra significantly to specifying a railway station sound system to announcements that are intelligible. Back in history, in about 20 BC, a Roman architecture and engineer named Vitruvius wrote a treatise or thesis on the acoustic properties of theaters including discussions of interference, echoes, and reverberation. And that is genuinely the beginning of architectural acoustics. In Book 5 of his De Architectura, or also known as the Ten Books of Architecture, Vitruvius describes the sound as wave comparable to a water wave extend to three dimensions, which, when interrupted by obstructions, would flow back and break up the next waves. He described that the ascending seats in ancient theaters are designed to prevent this deterioration of sound, and also recommended bronze vessels of appropriate sizes be placed in theaters to resonate with the fourth, fifth, and so on, up to double octave in order to resonate with more desirable, harmonious notes. Now let's take a tour at some branches of acoustical engineering and cover one by one. Architectural Acoustics Building acoustics or architectural acoustics is the science and engineering of achieving a decent sound within a building. Architectural acoustics is mostly about achieving good speech intelligibility in a restaurant, a big theater, or railway station, upscaling the quality of music in a recording studio or concert hall, or just suppressing noise to make our offices and homes more productive and pleasant places to work and live. Bioacoustics Bioacoustics generally concerns the scientific study of sound creation and hearing in different animals. It can comprehend acoustic communication and associated animal behavior and evolution of the species. 
how sound is produced by different animals, the auditory mechanisms and neurophysiology of them, the use of sound to monitor animal populations, and of course, the effect of man-made noise on animals. Electroacoustics deal with the design of headphones, speakers, microphones, and other sound systems. There's been a flying increase in the use of portable electronic devices, which can recreate sound and rely on electroacoustic engineering. For example, mobile phones, portable media players, and tablet computers. Musical acoustics. Musical acoustics is basically concerned with researching and describing the physics of music and its perception. Like, how sounds employed as music work. And this includes the function and design of musical instruments, including electronic synthesizers, the clinical use of music and therapy, human singing, computer analysis of music and composition, and also the perception of music. Speech Speech is the prime area of study for acoustical engineering, including production, processing, and the perception of speech. This may include physics, physiology, audio signal processing, psychology, and obviously linguistics. Speech synthesis and speech recognition are two essential aspects of the machine processing of speech, and ensuring proper speech transmission efficiently and with high quality is also another important study in acoustic engineering. However, there are so many other studies that are vastly relevant to acoustic engineering, even though some of them didn't happen to be covered in this video. But in the near future, maybe we'll do that. Anyways, if you like this video, do give us a thumbs up, comment down your thoughts below on how we can improve and what we can cover in the upcoming videos. And don't forget to subscribe to AudioZone for more videos like this.